Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a unit review video. If you don't know what this is, this is the series where you guys send me your best Genshin Impact units and I rate them on a scale of 1 to 10 to determine who has the best Genshin Impact unit. Before we get into that though, if you would like an opportunity to get your own unit reviewed, all you have to do is go to my Discord, link in the description below. There is a channel in the Discord that is titled hashtag unit review. In that channel will be instructions on how you can submit your own character for review. With that all wrapped up, let's get in to the video. All right, first up here we have Savannah and they wanted me to review their Nahida. Nahida, level 90. I'm interested to see this. I don't think we've reviewed a Nahida yet on this series, so I'm looking forward to this one. Wow, 1000 EM? That's nuts. Oh my gosh. Well, this is clearly a reaction based Nahida. Let's check the weapon. I imagine it's probably her signature. It's Sacrificial Frags. Is that like free to play, maybe medium spender then I would say? Definitely not a whale weapon by any means. I think this is the highest EM weapon in the, in the game, if I'm not mistaken though, for free to play slash low spenders. This is definitely a very, very good option. You can get your elemental skill twice. At, obviously this gets better with higher refinements, but at C2, which what you have it at right now, it's not terrible. I would definitely try to get a few more refinements on this though. Try to get it a little higher if you are able to. Your artifacts are going to be two-piece wanderer, two-piece gilded. You, you're clearly aiming for a thousand EM if you're going for this set. Um, I think more optimally, you would probably want the four-piece dendro set. I cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head but i think that set is the best one for her or four piece gilded is another option but shredding that dendro res can be very very useful constellation is going to be zero that's fine and talent's going to be seven ten ten i don't know how i feel about seven on the normal attack a bit of a waste of mats if we're being completely honest you could have kept it out one and been perfectly fine let's check some of these artifacts i'm expecting some triple em artifacts with some high EM stats on the feather and the flower. Let's see what we're working with here. The hat, like we said, EM, a little bit of crit rate, a little bit of crit damage, perfectly fine. I would like to see a little bit of energy recharge because getting that burst back on cooldown is going to be important. And if you're running triple EM, you are going to need a bit of energy recharge. The sands, denture damage bonus, that is perfectly fine, but I'm kind of surprised you're not running EM. Uh, you do have 65 EM on the piece though, which is pretty nice. Normal EM pieces have 187, so you got about maybe a third of that, which is not bad at all. Plus, you got some energy recharge on there. Not a bad choice. And the sands, EM again. Okay, so no energy recharge sands. You are going to be sticking with the EM, which is perfectly fine. You got some crit damage, got a little bit of attack. Definitely not the best piece in the world, but it will do. Uh, I don't think you need to focus too hard on crit stats. I think I would definitely go for, you know, things like attack and energy recharge over crit stats just because I feel like your crit rate, crit damage is going to be abysmal anyways. No crit weapon, no crit rate or damage hat. Like, there's no way it's above, like, 2070 or something like that. Feather. Ooh, yeah, an EM based piece for sure. Only two EM rolls. Not bad, though. And the flower, two EM rolls again. Okay, so these aren't like crazy high EM pieces, but because you have been combining so many EM items, like the two-piece wanders, two-piece gilded, plus sack frags, that is why you're able to reach this increment of a thousand, which looks crazy on the surface, but it's not as crazy once you realize what weapon you're running and the artifacts you have. Let's see the stats. Yeah, 12102. Oh my goodness, that is uh that is quite abysmal. Uh, 122 energy recharge is not terrible, but it can definitely be improved. 46 danger damage bonus. Yeah, overall, it's not terrible. I mean, obviously, that crit rate, crit damage is pretty abysmal. But for reaction Nahida, it's not like the most important thing in the world. I definitely prioritize your EM and energy recharge stats over anything else. Um, I do like this weapon for her, and this will help you get energy back a little bit. But I, I think you still need more energy recharge. Even with sack frags, I think energy recharge is still important. Unless you're running her with maybe some other dendro units and you're able to get your burst back on cooldown more efficiently. Uh, but it really just depends on the team you're running her with. As for the artifacts, I do recommend uh, the four piece uh, wooded set. That is definitely her best in slot. And unless you have it on another dendro character already, uh, you're really losing out if you don't have that set on your Nahida. 
yes this is good and I'm not gonna lie that a thousand em is pretty nice but overall the deep wooded set will help you um increase your damage output with nahida that being said though everything else though pretty pretty well balanced it's a, it's a good nahida i'm gonna give you a solid eight out of ten let's move on to the next build next up here we have uh bald and they wanted me to review their uh lisa who is definitely not bald you got the new outfit i rated i like the new outfit just as much as the next guy i see you're running an interesting weapon on her what is that oh no is this this i might be getting trolled here <laughs> oh no oh well you have artifacts on her that's something uh you're missing a a weapon though Unless maybe you switched it around, I don't know. I thought I was getting trolled, but maybe not. You got full artifacts on her, so I don't know. You got C1, that's something, and your talents are 786. Not bad. I mean, if you're using Lisa as your main and you're committed to her, uh, you'd think you'd probably put a weapon on her, like, you know, Widsith or, I don't know, Thrilling Tales at least for buffs or something. I have no idea. I'm not a main DPS Lisa main, but... I feel like putting an actual weapon on her would uh, help her out. Unless you're switching around, then you know what? Fair enough. I, I caught you off guard here with this review. Uh, we'll still look at your artifacts anyways and give you an appropriate review. But yeah, the weapon uh, definitely going to bring it down a large increment. Let's see the artifacts. Whew, that's a tough one. Uh, it's not great. Uh, you have 15 crit damage. The rest of the stats are pretty dead. Uh, this is a pretty nice piece, actually. And it's on set 2 if you wanted to go for that EM bonus. Yeah, you got a bit of energy recharge. Uh, crit rate rolls are a little low. Flat attack roll, unfortunate. Overall, though, pretty good. Hat? Um, no crit damage shove, but you do got attack percent and EM on there. That's something, but you got two flat stats. Really not preferable. The flower is gonna be pretty decent. You got, uh, at least 35 crit value on there. Plus, you got 14 recharge. It's going to be very nice for getting up that Lisa burst. And the feather, yeah, not terrible. I mean, the flat HP, uh, what are you going to do? But other than that, you're looking pretty well on this piece. Overall, though, talents, they're fine. Uh, I don't think you need to level up the normal attack unless you're using on her in the DPS build because you're Lisa main or something like that. But I can't even make that assumption because you have no weapon on her. And your artifacts are for like a generalist build and not anything in particular. This could be uh, EM Lisa. This could be uh, Electro Charge Lisa. Like, I don't know. This, the, the artifacts really don't tell me anything. And the talents, they really don't give me a lot of information either. For my assumption, you may just use Lisa for everything. And right now you just swapped off her weapon. Your stats are good enough, I guess. Um, you got a bit of energy recharge, which is nice. 61 electro damage bonus, not terrible. Your split, it's even at least, but it's definitely not a great split by any means. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, my friend, but I'm going to have to give this Lisa... Uh, I'm going to have to say a, a 6 out of 10. We'll go with 6. I feel like 6 is fair. Maybe you swapped off the weapon, and if so, I'm sorry, but uh, there's not much else I can really give this build. Let's move on to the next one. Next up here, we have Kokomi, who surprisingly enough wants me to review their Kokomi. Let's see here. Level 90 Kokomi, named after Kokomi. What else about her are we going to see here today? 2700 attack? Oh my gosh. What weapon are you running to give her 2700 attack? Skyward Atlas. Oh my. Okay, so main DPS Kokomi. That is without a doubt main DPS Kokomi. But you you must... How would that even work, though? Because you can't get crit stats on her. So you're relying just purely on base attack slash base HP slash hydro damage bonus for any damage output at all. Okay. This is going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to this. This is unique. Got four-piece heart of depth. Wow. This is interesting. Okay. So you're going just main DPS, pure attacking... You're not going for heals at all, which is kind of interesting considering her burst and uh, E are kind of, you know, meant to heal. And that's kind of their whole point of their existence. But if you're going DPS, hey, more power to you. Talents are 10, 9, 10. My goodness. You can tell that they're definitely prioritizing uh, the skills that do damage over the skills that do healing. Just based on the fact that this is still level 9 and this does nothing but heal. But the burst, and it could do a fair bit of damage, you know? If you get it up and you have a good stats, this could be do a crap ton of damage. Let's check some of these pieces here. 
I wonder if this is like a positive crit Kakomi or something. That could be kind of insane. I doubt it though. Let's check the flower. Uh, ooh, it's not terrible. You got a lot of attack on there. I can see that you're really prioritizing attack, but I think Kakomi really scales with HP more than she does attack. I think HP, I guess that helps more with healing. And if you're going for a more attack-based build, it's not a terrible flower. Let's check the feather. Crit damage, which is essentially useless. And then you got attack and recharge. Yeah, like I said, you really don't need any crit stats. This piece on a normal character would be pretty decent. On Kakomi, pretty dead. Uh, the sands. Oh, that's a lot of flat attack. Are you just stacking attack? That's kind of the impression I get from this build, is you're just stacking and stacking and stacking attack. Which is not a bad choice if you're just going pure attack Kakomi. But, whew, this is going to be an interesting build. Take this to plus 20. You can get maybe 100 flat attack on there. That could be cool. The goblet? Ah, man. Why do you, why are you, why are we using crit goblets? You don't need crit goblets. There's no point in crit goblets. This is useless. The only good stat you even have on here is flat HP. Other than that, this is a pretty dead piece for Kakomi. She really doesn't need the EM either. The hat? This is good. Now, this is what I like to see for Kakomi. Uh, the defense, unpreferable, but there's three other stats on here that she can at least use. The crit stats, she can't use. There's no point to them. Let's see the split. Negative 91, 92, let's go, Kakomi. Uh, 114 recharge, but you should probably care a little more about recharge if you're going for DPS Kakomi, because you probably need her burst more often than not. Then again, she just generate a lot of energy with her E, so it's not terrible. 90 Hydro Damage bonus, which is pretty good. I think that's her Ascension stat, um, plus the Goblet. Yeah, I mean, you are you are gonna do a ton of raw damage, but some of these artifacts are pretty unoptimal for DPS Kakomi. But other than that, I mean, your talents are perfect, your weapon's perfect. It's just the artifacts that need a little bit of work. So overall, I'm gonna give you a solid 9 out of 10. Let's move on to the next build. Next up here, we have uh, Meow, who wanted me to review their Sino. Let's see here, level 90 Sino. We got 1300 attack, 187 stamina, with a fresh 22222 HP. I can see here that you got his best in slot weapon. Bit of a whale choice, but it's definitely not a bad weapon for him. And if you're free to play, you just got extremely lucky, because this is a nuts weapon. 44 crit rate, great passive awesome weapon for Sino. You got, I believe, his best in slot set, if I'm not mistaken. If not, maybe it's a two-piece, two-piece set, but I know this set is not bad for him at all. Your constellation is going to be zero, and your talents are one, eight, ten. I like to see the crown burst. I appreciate that, because you know Sino is going to do absolutely crazy burst damage. Let's see some of these artifacts. I wonder how optimized you have made him. Pretty damn optimal. That's not a bad feather. 2 HP rolls, unfortunate, but 27 crit damage, plus you really want to prioritize crit damage on a build like this, because you already got 44 crit rate from this pole arm. The flower, yeah, a lot of crit rate, a lot of crit damage, really good piece. The hat, energy recharge, again, we don't actually need crit rate as much because we already got that pole arm. Energy recharge and attack are honestly better stats, so I actually like this piece. The goblet, yeah, a lot of crit damage. I like the direction you're taking this Sinnoh. A lot of crit damage, which is exactly what we want to see. And the last thing is going to be the sands. Yeah, more crit damage, more energy recharge. We'd like to see a little less HP and a little more ER and crit damage here. But other than that, great piece. And you're running EM sands, which means you're definitely going for reaction-based Sino, which I do think is the best possible version of him. Let's see these stats. Wow. That is crazy good. That is crazy, crazy good. 72, nearly 250. That is insane. 127 recharge, 61 electro damage bonus. I mean, how do you get better than this? How do you possibly do better than this? Obviously, if you want a perfect 10 out of 10, I would crown this too. Uh, you don't have to level up as normal attack. There's no point. Um, the only points... Like, point ones I would deduct here are for just dead stats on a couple different pieces. Like, this piece is a little unoptimal. Um, this piece could be improved ever so slightly. And pieces like this are actually really good. But you can actually get more crit rate. I'd say if this was like 80 to 50, that would be pretty perfect. But overall, as for right now, I'm going to give this Sino a solid 9.5 out of 10. Let's move on to the next build. 
Next up here, we have Annette, and they wanted me to review their Hu Tao. This player is 51, so the stats here are going to be a little bit lower than normal. But we, we are saying 30k HP, so maybe not as much as I thought. And 137 EM. Pretty good off the bat. Let's see the weapon. Jade Winged Spear. An interesting choice. Not a bad one, though. I mean, Jade Winged Spear can really work for every character. That's a pole arm. But uh, the attack is definitely better for characters like Zhao uh, rather than Hu Tao. Because Hu Tao scales more with HP than she does attack. Artifacts are going to be the four-piece Crimson Witch. Uh, we are using a purple piece, which honestly I think makes sense for AR-51. You can't get the full set yet. Throw, throw in a purple in there and maybe it will work out. And then you can get this sweet, sweet Crimson Witch of Flames bonus. The constellation is zero. No C1, unfortunate, my friend. Talents are 10, 10, 10. You went hard on the talents. You got 10, 10, 10 talents before you got level 90 weapon. Bit of an interesting priority there. I'm not so sure about that. I definitely go for level 90 weapon ahead of talents, but maybe you're just doing them systematically and you're getting to the weapon eventually. So, not a bad choice at all. All these stats are obviously good for Hu Tao. Let's see those artifacts. Let's start off with the purple piece. Actually, that's a really good purple piece. For Hu Tao, this is actually pretty solid. You could probably use this all the way until like AR-55 and it will work just as fine as a gold piece because the stats on this are pretty damn good. You got crit damage, crit rate, EM. What else do you need? The goblet. Um, this would be better if it was inset, but because it's offset, I would say it's a little bit of a coat piece. But overall, uh, for AR-50, it's usable. I'd keep it for right now until you get anything better. Um, the hat, not terrible. You got HP, EM, energy recharge, crit rate, which is like the perfect stats for Hu Tao. Uh, the only problem is is that you miss crit rate every time, <laughs> so that's a little unfortunate. But overall, it's not a terrible piece at all. The flower, pretty decent. Um, EM, good. Crit rate damage, good. Flat attack, not as good. And then unfortunately, you miss crit rate a lot. I'm worried about your crit rate stat. Uh, let's see the feather. Wow, a lot of crit damage on this one. And a tiny bit of crit rate. Um, not a lot though. Overall though, pretty damn good piece. You got like 37 crit value on there. Exactly what we like to see. Now let's see that split i have i have a worrying feeling that your crit rate might just be a little low you got jade spear but let's see yeah crit rate's a little bit low that's what i thought would happen you are running crit damage helmet um you got 140 recharge and it's 61 pyro damage bonus it's not terrible i mean 46 is doable but doing things like ascending this weapon to 90 um trying to get some crit rate subs on these pieces instead of crit damage is definitely going to help you a lot i mean a lot of these pieces have crit rate, it's just you didn't roll into crit rate once on like a single piece. You missed it on this one, you missed crit rate here, you missed crit rate here, you hit it once on this piece, and then the purple piece is a purple piece. So, you definitely want to try to aim, uh, obviously, to hit in crit rate just a little bit more uh, on some of these pieces to get that crit rate up to maybe uh, 50 or 60%, I think is pretty solid for Hu Tao. Overall, though, you got perfect talent, a damn good weapon, would like to see 90, though, and some decent artifacts for AR-51, so we are going to give you a solid 8 out of 10. Let's move on to the next unit. And our last build for today is going to be Leofi, who wanted me to review their Ayato. Level 90 Ayato, let's see here, 1900 attack, 20k HP, 1000 defense, not great you do got his best in slot weapon though so that's exactly what we like to see the harin gakpupu fatutsu is what we're gonna call it i don't know how to pronounce that name uh it's a really good weapon for him i would say definitely it's his best in slot if not maybe primarily jade cutter but it's a specialty weapon and it looks cool on him artifacts uh two piece two piece perfectly fine not the most optimal set but I always appreciate a two-piece, two-piece. Instead of going for the best overall set bonus and sacrificing substats, you sacrifice the set bonus for some better substats. Constellation is zero, and talents are 10, 10, 10. Let's go. Ayato 10, 10, 10. This is, means they are an Ayato main. This is exactly what we like to see. We got the perfect talents, perfect weapon. We're on track for a 10 out of 10 build. Comes down to the artifacts. Let's see. Okay. The 10 out of 10 build may be dead now, but it was hopeful for a little bit. Not a terrible piece, though. I mean, I don't know. 17 crit damage, 
777 HP. That's a nice number to look at. I like it. Goblet. Ooh, more crit damage. You have no crit rate on either of these pieces. I mean, you do have this weapon, the Harangakupu Bufutsu. But yeah, you're definitely going to need some crit rate, even with that, I think. You have a crit damage hat with six crit rate, 12 energy recharge. Again, not a ton of crit rate here. I'm worried for your crit rate stat. You got 18 defense, which kind of explains why you have a thousand there. Uh, the flower, not a bad flower. Again, more defense, but you do got crit damage, crit rate. So that's nice. And the feather is pretty good. Yeah, not a bad feather. You got about 40 CV there. That's a really good feather. Uh, let's see the split. 66, not terrible. That's not bad. I thought it'd be a little worse than that, honestly, but you almost had 70. That's not terrible. You got 122 energy recharge and 61 hydro damage bonus. Yeah, overall, it's, it's just a solid Ayato, right? Like, some of these artifacts can be improved. Uh, most definitely, like, this piece, I think, is definitely the one that is probably the worst out of the set. Uh, the goblet's pretty decent. And the other three, I think, you can make do with for right now. And honestly, there's nothing to critique about your talents, nothing to critique about your weapon. I honestly don't know what else to say about this. It's just a good Ayato. So we're going to give it a good 8 out of 10. And with that all wrapped up, that is going to be the end of our video for today. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing or leaving a like down below. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.